Well, good day and God bless you. Hi, I'm Troy Rockers. Some people call me Brother Troy, Pastor Troy, or Evangelist Troy, but I'm a Christian who's bringing forth the good news of Jesus Christ to you today. This is uh, Jesus Saves Church Online. We're part of the Kingdom Come Missions. We're happy to have you. This is an authentic online church where you can receive healing, deliverance, and the Word of God and deeper mysteries of the faith. So today we're talking about the sword of the Spirit. I've been going through a series of the armor of God that's found in Ephesians 6. And hopefully you have your Bibles today. We will take communion as well. So be sure and grab your communion supplies, your bread and some water, wine, or juice. We'll take that here in a little while. So have that prepared. Have your Bible with you so you can follow along. As well as there's notes right there on your screen. If you look down below, there's chat. That's available to you so you can chat with the ministers here or other people online, other Christians. And at the end of the service, we do active prayer. And at that time, um, you can receive specific prayer for your specific needs, loved ones, or what you know, whomever. So, if you have a need, make sure you log into chat so that we, you know, can pray for you how you need prayed for. If you need direct chat, one on one, you don't want to be in the public chat room. You just click on the three little dots there next to your name once you sign in. And if you haven't logged in before, please sign up and log in. Um, we'd like to discipleship you. You know, you can get on our newsletter um, that comes out usually once a week. And there's information on there and events going on, things to pray for as far as the nation and other things like that. So hopefully you're blessed today. You know, we just had an election here in the United States of America. Hopefully you were praying during that time frame and you continue to pray for this nation, that that the people that were elected will be in God's will and, and reach out to him and follow him for the course of this nation so that we are blessed. And I really feel like America is coming into a time of blessing because how we're aligning with the nation of Israel. As the scripture says, God will bless those nations that bless Israel. And those that come against Israel, they're fighting against God. So I look forward to what's in, in store for the future. There may be a little rough time ahead as things um, unfold, but God's in charge. So today I'm going to bring forth the good news, uh, the gospel. I'm going to do some teaching on the sword of the spirit which is part of the armor of God. And right now, we're going to have a psalm with some praise music. So I want you to just reach out to the Lord, praise Him. If, if you don't know how these songs go, they're authentic, they're unique to our ministry. We're bringing forth the psalms and music. Um, just read along and just seek the Holy Spirit, seek Father God and Jesus, and hopefully you will be touched by Him. Where there are two more gathered in prayer, he is in the midst. So right now I want to open with a prayer for the service today. And if you would join me and usher in the Holy Spirit, usher in Jesus, he'll be in the midst of us, right? So Heavenly Father, we thank you for this day, Lord. We love and honor you. May your grace, honor, and glory be bestowed on all the saints. May they walk in love wherever they go, Lord. May they, when they walk into a store, may people look at them and know that they're different from other people in the world, Lord. I pray for the service today, Father God. I pray you'd use me mightily, Father God. Bring forth your your message through me. I yield to you, Holy Spirit. I ask you'd use me. And I ask for the holy angels to be stationed with the saints today. Prepare to do work on them. Prepare to minister healing to them as they need it. And deliverance in Jesus' name, Father God. We thank you for all things. We honor and glorify you, Jesus. Thank you for being in the midst of us now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Well, saints, enjoy the psalm music. It's coming forth now.
ungodly are not so, but are like the chafe which the wind drives away. Therefore, the ungodly shall not stand, shall the judgment stand, or sinners in the congregation. Welcome back. I pray that you enjoyed the psalm music and you worship the Lord with your heart, mind, soul, and you were touched by the Holy Spirit. We're going to now bring communion to you, so if you would, grab your supplies, your bread, as well as some water, wine, or juice, or a cracker, whatever you have for the bread. It doesn't matter what it is. We will sanctify it to the Lord as long as it is made of flour. So, um, if you would, go ahead and and bring up your um, bread and water, wine, or juice, and we'll sanctify them first, but then don't take them till I read you the scriptures, and we'll take them together as the body of Christ. So, if you hold up your piece of bread in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's name, every piece of bread becomes the body of Jesus Christ, in Jesus' name. Now, if you hold up your cup, water, wine, or juice, and we'll sanctify it to the Lord. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus Christ's name, every cup becomes the blood of Jesus Christ right now, in Jesus' name. So in the spiritual realm, they just became the body and blood of Jesus Christ. Physically on earth, they still look the same, but they've changed spiritually. So, And that can bring forth power because you're taking in Christ. So mm-hmm. at the Last Supper, and we're going to read Luke 2, uh, 22, 19, at the Last Supper when Jesus was in the upper room with his disciples, he took bread and he gave thanks and broke it. And he gave it to them saying, this is my body given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. So before you take in the body of Christ, which you can on your own now, be sure and thank the Father for all he's done for you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus, for all you've done for me. Thank you for this day. Thank you for good clothing and shelter. Thank Thank you, you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for your body. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you for your precious body. Thank you for going to the cross me. Oh, thank you for your stripes, Jesus. Thank you for the crown of thorns. Thank you for taking my sins. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. When the supper was ended, afterwards he took the cup, and he said this, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is poured out for you. So remember, as you take in the blood of Jesus, he poured out his blood for you and your sins, so that you may have an eternal hope in Christ to be seated in the heavenly realms with God the Father for eternity. Thank you, Jesus, for your precious blood. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for everything, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus, for your blood. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, there's so much power in the body and blood of Christ. Thank you for your blood, Jesus. Thank you for your blood. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, my King, my Lord, my Savior. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Well, remember, saints, take in the body and blood on a regular basis. Take communion regularly with your family. There's power in it, and Jesus said to take it until he returns. So when you're gathered together with loved ones, with other Christians, Mm -hmm. have communion. We'll be right back with the sword of the Spirit. Well, hello and welcome back. And I pray that you um, are prepared to hear the sword of the Spirit, the Word of God, Um, The sword of the Spirit is the sixth piece of armor in Paul's um, Ephesians 6 statement. And I want to go ahead and read that to you briefly here real quick. Ephesians 6, 10, 17 says, And take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, being watchful to this end with all perseverance and supplication for all the saints. So in Ephesians 6, um, we hear about the sword of the Spirit which is the Word of God. So that's what I want to talk about today. I'm going to break it down for you. Hopefully you'll be blessed by this. And um, 
you'll understand more about your sword and how to carry it and how to yield it and wield it for the for God and for yourself to defend against the enemy and to use it offensively. So I want to go first to Judges in the Bible. Judges 7 records the story of Gideon and his 300 men. Gideon had um, 32,000 Israelites and they were coming up against the Midianite camp and the Midianite camp had 135,000 men. They were severely outnumbered and Gideon was ready to do battle but God had other plans for him and the Lord God Almighty said wait it's not time for you to go up yet. Um, he was about to show his people how powerful our God is because if he would have went up there with the 32,000 God said to him in that scripture that the Israelites would say that they did it and not God. So he made the army much, much smaller. That is, God did. He told Gideon to let anyone who was afraid of the upcoming battle to return home. And there were 22,000 men that left and went home. That left 10,000 men. And God then said, well, I'm looking for a smaller group. And he told Gideon then to have the remainder of those men drink from a spring. And those who lapped up water like a dog would remain, and the other ones were going to be sent home. Well, it ended up there was only 300 men that did that. So there was Gideon and 300 men that were going to go up against the Mennonites. And on God's signal, they blew their trumpets, and they broke pitchers covering their torches, and shouted, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon, Judges 7.20. So right here we see it was the sword of the Lord that that moved the Midianites out. And what happened is, the unthinkable happened, the Midianites actually attached, attacked themselves. The 300 men had no swords, but torches and trumpets. And the Midianite camp, it says in Judges 7.22, set every man's sword against his companion throughout the whole camp. So they attacked themselves because God's sword is bigger than any man's sword. And God plunged the enemy's camp into chaos and wild defeat. And the Israelites were delivered from their foes by a miracle. And so that they knew that God was their victor and their victory and he was their deliverer and that they wouldn't rely on themselves in upcoming battles. So with his sword, he will deliver us, right? Oh, Father God, we ask your sword to deliver us from every battle right now we're facing in Jesus' name. Thank you for your sword, Father. Thank you, Lord. So let's break down the sword. Throughout the world, there's been certain individuals who have been known for their swords, right? Um, from England, we look at King Arthur and his sword Excalibur. It's a very famous sword. From Spain, there's El Cid and his long sword called the Tizona. And from Scotland, there was William Wallace and his unnamed Claymore. So there's been men in history throughout time who were great warriors who fought many battles and had famous swords, right? And so our sword is the word of God. So the sword that Paul talks about here is the only offensive weapon that we have in our capacity. All of the other armor that we have is for defensive purposes. We have the shield of faith, the belt of truth, the breastplate of righteousness, the helmet of salvation, the shoes of readiness, right? Those are all defensive pieces of armor. And if we look back in history, King uh, Arthur of England, his fame was his sword. It wasn't his shoes or his armor, right? So there's something to think about there is that sword is very, very important. We have to have it to um, be offensive, right? To fight our battles, right? And so in the Roman army, the sword became famous. It was known as the sword that conquered the world, and it was named the Gladius. Now, the Roman army um, soldiers actually had more weapons than just the Gladius. They, had, they went into war with a dagger, and the name of that dagger was called, let me find that, is the Pugio. Pugio. And they also had spears. They were named Pillas, and then they had lead-weighted darts named Plumbati. Plumbate. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. But anyway, so they went into battle with just more than their sword. And if you think about it, a couple of those weapons were long-distance weapons, javelins and darts. And we'll get into that here, too, in a little while. But Paul's um, arsenal that he described for us, he didn't describe all those other things that he's seen on those Roman soldiers. He only described the sword, right? That's all he described. He didn't say we have javelins, we have arrows or darts. Uh, nor did he talk about arrows, which I'm sure the Roman army probably had um, men that, you know, flung arrows at their attackers. So, what is the Word of God? We need to understand that the sword of the Spirit is the Word of God, it says in the Scripture. So, in Psalms 119, 105, it says, Your Word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. So, right there, God's Word, the Holy Bible, illuminates. 
It reveals us to us the good and the bad, evil and light, and wise and unwise, right? It's the ultimate tool in learning how to live our life, the best possible life, free from the restraint, restraints of stumbling into darkness or sin or evil, right? So we have to have that word to understand how to walk on this earth. You know, Proverbs is full of nothing but wisdom pieces on how to live your life on earth that's just one book out of all the books right so john 17 17 says sanctify them by your truth your word is truth so god's word is truth plain and simple we have perfect confidence in the fact that his words are accurate true and unerring when following them they can guide us into all truth right and light our path as we talked about so when you read the word of god um, you understand that it's nothing but truth. It's not in error in anywhere in any way, shape, or form. And you need to take that to heart and follow those examples in the Bible of how to live your life, right? We can be destroyed, though, by lack of knowledge, it says in Hosea 4, 6. So we'll be blessed, though, if we hear and keep the Word of God. It talks about in Luke eleven twenty eight, And the knowledge is not just for us. We are to be ready to answer others who ask us why we give an account for our hope in 1 Peter three fifteen. So, Understand those words of God are important for us. You know, you can be destroyed by lack of knowledge. By not reading the word, you can be taken out by the enemy, right? But we're blessed when we keep the word and hear it. It says in Luke, and then again, like I said, we give a account to others for our hope and joy um, in First Peter because we know we have eternal salvation with Jesus Christ, right? So reading your word is much more than just seeking Jesus. It, it gives you knowledge. It gives you defense of the enemy. And we're going to get into more of that here now. So in Hebrews 4.12, why a sword? For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit, joint and marrow, as a discerner of thoughts and intentions of the heart. So that sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, it can divide a soul and spirit. It can crush, or it can divide bone uh, from marrow. So joint from marrow. So it's more than just the word. It is the sword of God. When Christ returns, he is going to speak and a sword, a two-edged sword is going to come out of his mouth because it's his word, right? It talks about that in Revelations when he returns. The all-powerful sword of the living God is capable and able to cut through any defense of the evil one, especially when it's backed by the Holy Spirit, right? It has to be backed by the Holy Spirit. That's what gives it power. It can divide bone and marrow, as I talked about. When yielded by God's servant, though, it can crush every uh, scheme of the enemy and every defense he would have, right? When, when God's words uh, show us something wrong in our lives, by reading the word, we may get revelation. Then the word of God allows us to surgically remove those things from our lives and our thoughts, right? We need the mind of Christ, it says, and to get the mind of Christ, we need to read the Word, take in the Word, and become the Word. But at the same time, when there's something in us, the Holy Spirit shows us through the Word of God, that's not a light or, or we're in air in some way, um, then we need to remove it and let the Holy Spirit do that through His Word. Unlike all the other pieces of the armor of God, which are solely defensive, the sword is kind of unique because it is an offensive weapon, but it can be used defensively as well. A lot of people don't think about that when they think of the sword of the spirit. They think of, well, that's our only offensive weapon. Well, actually, it's used in defense as well. You know, think about those Roman army soldiers in the past. Whenever they conquered the world, they also had to defend with that sword. Someone else was coming out them with a battle axe or with another sword. There was clashes with that sword to knock off their uh, foes' weapons, right? So let's think about that. That sword is used for close combat, and that's What's interesting about that whole context is the Roman soldiers had long-range things. They had javelins. They had darts they could throw. They probably had archers too, but that's not. Uh, I didn't bring that up today. But in Paul's teaching, all we have is the sword, which is a close-range battle. Uh, it, that's what it's for. It's close-range combat, hand-to-hand -hand combat. And let's look at Christ, how he battled the evil one. And Jesus Christ in, in Luke 4.1, it talks about his accounts, right? And in Matthew 4, 4, it says, By every word that proceeds from the mouth of God, right, we learn about Satan attacking um, Jesus. Now he rebuked the devil. So 
Let's go into Luke 4, 1. I want to read this to you. Then Jesus, being filled with the Holy Spirit, returned from the Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness. This is right after he was baptized. The Holy Spirit pushed him into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. Being tempted for 40 days by the devil, and in those days he ate nothing. And afterward, when they ended, he was hungry. And the devil said to him, If you are the Son of God, command this stone to become bread. But Jesus answered him, saying, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. So, this is our first account of Jesus defending with the sword. And if you'll notice, that devil actually came at him with the sword of the Spirit. He came after him with some of the word of God, right? The devil knows the word of God. He was in heaven, right, before he fell. He's not some ignorant little you know, pitchfork devil sitting over here or on your shoulder like you see in cartoons. He is a roaring lion seeking whom he may devour. And he knows the word of God. He was in heaven. He fell. But understand, he may come at you with, with those things, with some scripture. And you have to be able to rebuke him, right? Uh, after, after that, in, in verse 5, it says, Then the devil taking him up, that is Jesus, on a high mountain, showed him all the kingdoms of the world in a moment of time. And the devil said to him, All this authority I will give you and their glory, for this has been delivered to me, and I give it to whomever I wish. Therefore, if you will worship before me, all will be yours. And Jesus answered and said to him, Get behind me, Satan, for it is written, You shall worship the Lord your God, and him only you shall serve. So how did he defend? The offensive attack of the devil with the sword of the Spirit again. What's interesting about this scripture is, think about all those musicians, Hollywood stars out there, all the, everybody who seeks fame and fortune. They are caught up in this scripture by Satan, right? He will give them the world. He will give them glory. He will give them honor, right? If they'll just simply bow down to him. And many of those people live a horrible life today. They have no love, no joy. They're bound by the enemy. They have riches and fame, but you know where do they end up without Jesus? They end up in hell, unfortunately. So remember that when you walk your walk, and um, we don't want fame and fortune, right? We just want to do what the Lord has us to do on this earth because we are his saints, right? In verse 8, it says in Jesus, uh, let's see, hold on, uh, verse 9, Then he brought him to Jerusalem, that is, the devil took Jesus to Jerusalem, and he set him on the pinnacle of the temple. And he said to him, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down from here. For it is written, He shall give his angels charge over you to keep you. And they are, and in their hands they shall bear you up, lest you dash your foot against a stone. And Jesus answered and said to him, It has been said, You shall not tempt the Lord your God. Now, when the devil had ended every temptation, he departed from him until an opportune time. So, again, we see Jesus defending with the sword of the Spirit. And, and realize this also, that last piece of scripture I read in 13 he left him for an oppor- another opportune time. So that meant Satan was going to come back and try to tempt Jesus again and come after him. So realize this. Our battles continue with the enemy until we leave this earth. I spoke to you um, last week about the three things we battle in, uh, is the flesh, right, the world, and Satan. So we not only have to battle the devil, but we have to deal with the world and all that it throws at us, you know, all its unrighteousness and unholiness. You know, you live a conservative, holy life for the Lord, yet today's world says, oh, homosexuality is fine. Oh, you know, you're a racist or you're a, you're a, you know, whatever, because you want to live a holy life and you want to, you know, speak the truth about it isn't right to live this way. Well, understand that's the world attacking you, and you have to be able to rebuke that. But also, you need to understand your flesh is at war with your spirit as well. So, back to my um, teaching for the day, though, sword of the spirit. The Romans relied in part on assailing their enemy from a distance with javelins and darts, but God does not give us that opportunity as Christians. He simply gives us the sword of the spirit in all of our defenses, right? Why is that? Well, I think it's possible that, that God wants to um, make us rely on him, first of all. Second of all, we're going to go through trials and tribulations and persecutions for Christ's name's sake is what Jesus said to us in the scripture. So when we go through trials and tribulations, and we're going to go through testings too, we're all tested by God. Um, those are times when we are to grow in the Lord. And if we had long-range weapons all the time at our you know, availability, we would never be tried. 
We're not, we would never have trials and tribulations. We would never grow in the Lord. You see, our salvation isn't a one-time event. Our sanctification isn't a one-time event. It's an ever-growing process of becoming more and more like Christ, of, of crucifying the flesh, of renewing our mind, of changing into um, what God wants us to be, which is a holy and righteous saint for him, speaking to all people in love and loving the Father with all of our heart, mind, soul, and strength. So anyway, um, we we have that sword, but we don't have those long-range uh, weapons available for us, and I think it's for our growth. So we rely on the Lord, and we go to the Word of God, and we use our sword as we're supposed to. You know, as we walk this journey and walk out our sanctification, in the book of Revelations, it shows us where our destiny will be. You know, and then what's interesting, it talks about whenever Jesus returns and there's a new earth, new heaven, etc. Um, it says this in Revelations, to him who overcomes, all these things will be done for us, right? There'll be joy. There'll be no more sadness or sorrow or sickness in heaven, right? But it's, it doesn't say this, to him who remains as he is. In other words, to him who overcomes means you're going to have trials and tribulations. You're going to have to grow in the Lord, as do I. And it's an ever-growing process, right? And it just doesn't mean that you are saved once, you have the Holy Spirit, and you're done, right, in your growth. We should all strive for growth in the Lord. We should all strive for crucifying things and removing things from our life that aren't of God, right? So anyway, uh, what promises can we stand on then? Well, Matthew 24, 13 says, But he who endures to the end shall be saved. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. We will be saved. In Romans 8, 31, it says, What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? I talked about that last week again. God is on our side. He wants a relationship with us, and we are saved, right? If you've been filled with the Holy Spirit, you're sanctified, and you're going to go to heaven. But we have to continue to walk forward, right? In Isaiah 46, 11, it says this, Indeed, I have spoken it. I will also bring it to pass. I have purposed it. I will also do it. So understand that we are in a battle, right? But we have our armor, and God is on our side. So take up your sword. The battle is ours. Use the word of God against the enemy to defend. You know, if you have a spirit of fear come speak to you, then speak, Satan, get behind me. For the word of God says, God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power of love and sound mind. Or perfect love casts out fear. I rebuke you, spirit of fear. You know, if um, you suffer from lust, if you suffer from um, grief, it, it doesn't matter. Use scripture to battle those things. Look up specific scripture in the Bible. Most Bibles have in the back of it, you know, um, a, a uh, specific index that shows you certain um, things like grief, fear, I don't know what that's called, but they have this index where it shows you specific scriptures that deal with those things. If you struggle in a certain area in your life, um, whatever it may be, anger, jealousy, rage, lust, pride, hello, church, pride is a huge one, then humble yourself and go to that Bible and read those words and rebuke that spirit with those words. If you don't have a relationship with Jesus Christ, Today is a day, if the Holy Spirit is speaking to you, that you can come into a relationship with, with Jesus. He loves you. He died for you on a cross. And every one of us has sinned on this earth. And our God, God the Father, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the one true God, is a holy and righteous God. He made a way to him through his son Jesus. And that's the only way to get to heaven and be with the Father, right? Many people pass away today. And every, what gets me is everybody says, oh, they're in heaven. Well, are they in heaven or not? Did they have a relationship with Jesus? Were they born again Christian? Did they have the Holy Spirit? If not, they're not in heaven. That's what the Word of God says, is that you must repent, accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. So, it's a simple thing. If the Lord is knocking, the Holy Spirit's knocking on you right now saying He wants a relationship with you, you just simply have to meet Him. You know, God isn't a God. Jesus isn't um, going to come in through the door. He waits for you to knock, and it will be open to you. So, all you need to do is simply say, Jesus, I ask forgiveness for my sins. I repent. I want to turn from sin. I don't want to sin anymore. I want to follow you. Come into my life, Jesus. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. I ask you now in Jesus' name. If you pray that prayer from the bottom of your heart, then Jesus is going to meet you. He's going to fill you with the Holy Spirit. And if that's you and you just prayed that prayer, 
please reach out to us with a direct chat. Click sign in, log in. We, we'd appreciate if you logged in every week, all of you out there, um, and so we can know who's following us. And click on the three dots, and we can directly chat with you. And we'd like to encourage you and maybe give you some scripture to start with reading if you haven't ever read the Bible to get you on your path. And if you're a backslidden Christian, if this message has spoke to you about raising up your sword and fighting the devil that's been speaking to you of lust or, or whatever it is, and you've slidden back, then reach out to us as well. And, you know, you just renew yourself with the Lord. Say, Father God, I repent. Wash away the dirt off my feet. I ask forgiveness for my sins, Father God. In Jesus' name, I humble myself before you. Right now, I want to be clean for you, Father. In Jesus' name, help me with this problem. Help me with this lust. Help me with this anger. Help me with this whatever it may be, fear. In Jesus' name. And renew your your fight against the enemy. and Raise up your sword. Well, I pray you are blessed. And now we're going to have a psalm or two. Uh, where you can worship the Lord, please usher in the Holy Spirit, just meditate, pray this out loud with your mouth, the, the psalm, and seek the Father, seek the Holy Spirit. And then after that, I'm going to be back with active prayer for you and your family. If you need specific prayer, please direct chat with us. We'll be praying for you. God bless you. I'll be right back. Praise Him for 
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Did you enjoy worshiping the Lord? I pray that you did. I pray you seeked him with all your heart, mind, soul, and strength. And I'm looking forward to bringing active prayer to you now, where I pray as the Holy Spirit leads me and moves me. And once again, if you need specific prayer, um, please reach out to us. And um, we lift up those in the past that have reached out um, and needed prayer. We've been continuing to pray for them. I pray... um, that Wayne will be healed, who was, uh, he was asked to be prayed for. I don't know what his infirmity is, but we pray that he be healed in Jesus Christ's name. Whatever his infirmity is, every weapon and demon be bound, come out of him in Jesus' name. You know, if you have somebody you wants to pray for um, actively on the, you know, during the service, please get that to us early in the week. Um, we need that ahead of time. But if you have um, someone now who's on your heart, just enter into the chat room and um, go in there and and, you know you can private chat us just hit those three dots and you'll have a direct chat with someone and we'll get the information and then we'll pray and um, we'll be praying with you throughout the week as well so uh, you know we just talked about the sword of the spirit so I'd like to use the sword of the spirit in this prayer today as much as I can there's more power behind that I believe and um, yeah I think it's important for you to use um, the sword in your prayers as well so Um, We're going to begin now. So uh, if you just lift up your hands, the Father God. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord. We thank you for all things. Ask for filling the Holy Spirit and Holy Ghost fire upon me and all the saints, Father God. Where there are two more gathered in prayer, you're in the midst of us. We thank you, Jesus, for being in the midst of us. Oh, blessed be your name forever and ever, King Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Praise be to you, praise be to you. Oh, Father God, Lord, thank you, Jesus, for what you did on the cross. Thank you for all things. We ask for the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon us now and the Holy Ghost fire on us, Lord. I ask you to burn up everything not a light within us or on us in Jesus Christ's name. Every scheme of the devil be burned up with Holy Ghost fire in Jesus Christ's name off our lives in Jesus Christ's name. Your word says this, and Jesus spoke this himself in the temple in Luke 4, 18. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me because he has anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He has sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and recovery of sight to the blind, to set at liberty those who are oppressed, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. In Jesus' name, we thank you for this, Father God. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for coming. You know what's interesting about this scripture? He said what? He came to heal the brokenhearted. Did he not? He came to give sight to the blind, right? And all who are oppressed, right? He came to set the captives free. So understand this. Your salvation is much more than that. Jesus came for you to have a more abundant life. He came for you to be freed and delivered and healed, heal your broken heart. In our ministry, we really, really want to help those who have a broken heart, which is pretty much everybody in the world. I mean, who doesn't have a broken heart from something? And I want to pray for your hearts today. I want to pray for deliverance. I want to pray for healing. And and just accept um, the Lord moving on you. You know, you have to give it to him, though. When you keep your wounds in here, he can't heal them. You have to give it to Jesus, all right? So, Heavenly Father, thank you for all things. Behold, I give you the authority to trample on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy, said Christ, right? Therefore, the Lord our God has highly exalted him and given him the name, which is above every name, that at the name of Jesus every knee shall bow, of those in heaven, those upon the earth, and of those under the, under the earth, right? 
So you demons, you have to bow right now. Every spirit that's coming against every saint out there, you're bound by the blood of Jesus Christ. I take authority of you, as I just stated. And you must bow to King Jesus, right? For the glory of God the Father, the scriptures say. You must bow. You must bow. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I command you let go of any broken hearts. In Jesus' name, I divide soul and spirit as the sword of the Spirit says. The word of God says, I divide soul and spirit. Every heart part be moved in the light with Christ. Every devil, you're bound. You come out of them. Let go of their hearts. In Jesus Christ's name, you come out and go to the abyss with all your weapons in Jesus name heart parts be healed by the blood of Jesus be healed Holy Ghost fire in the hearts be healed heart parts be healed broken heart parts give your pain your sorrow right now to Jesus he came to take it he came to heal the brokenhearted be healed in Jesus name be healed in Jesus name all parts that have fear all parts that have rejection come out and go with the Lord Jesus in spirits of fear and rejection, you're bound. You come out after them and go to the abyss. I break the generational curse that allowed you in. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Healing on infirmities. In Jesus Christ's name, every infirmity spirit be bound. Every weapon and demon sent to the saints to cause them pain, come out. In Jesus' name. Any spirit of torment, get out. Fear is gone. You go too. In Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Holy Ghost fire. In Jesus' name, I lose Holy Ghost fire. In Jesus' name, upon any weapon. In Jesus' name, be burned up with Holy Ghost fire. Every weapon, be burned up with Holy Ghost fire. Every weapon, be burned up with Holy Ghost fire. In Jesus' name, I release the antidote from heaven against any on any poison that was on any fiery darts. I pull every fiery dart out of the saints. I release the antidote from heaven on any poison that was on those darts. In Jesus Christ's name, in Jesus' name, be healed in that area. You're having some infirmity. Be healed in Jesus' name. I ask for the mind of Christ on all the saints. I ask for their minds to be loosed, Father, in Jesus' name. Every weapon of mind control and Illuminati, you're bound in the saints. I pull you down in Jesus' name. I cast you to the abyss. I cut off all your tentacles in Jesus' name. You cannot have them in Jesus' name. Minds be healed. Every weapon in their mind be burned up. The Holy Ghost fire in Jesus' name now. Every weapon burn up now in Jesus' name. Thank you. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. I pray for the children out there. For everybody watching and listening who have grandchildren and children, I pray for those children. I put the blood of Jesus Christ over them. I break every scheme the enemy is using to come against them. I put the blood of Jesus Christ between them and every devil in Jesus Christ's name. I pray for their mothers and fathers. If they're in a divorced family, I put the blood of Jesus Christ over the divorce. I put the blood of Jesus Christ over their broken hearts. I pray for both sides, mother and father, in Jesus' name. And I bind every spirit that's operating in that. In Jesus' name, may peace come into the households of all involved in Jesus name in Jesus name in Jesus name thank you Holy Spirit I pray up for this nation now I lift up the nation United States of America to you Father God I ask for repentance I ask for revival and I repent on behalf of the nation we repent on behalf of this nation Father God I pray for revival Father God in Jesus name I pray you could continue to move in the house and the Senate and the leaders of this country Lord and everybody who was put in office, Lord, I pray you'd move on them, Father God. In Jesus' name, I ask you to protect the United States of America, Father God. I pray that people would repent and seek you, Lord. I pray for revival, Father God. In Jesus' name, I pray for the schools. I lift them up to you. Every scheme of the devil be bound that's sent to the schools. All witchcraft, death, destruction sent to the schools is bound. We pull it down now. We break every assignment off the schools in Jesus Christ's name. I bind the Illuminati in Jesus Christ's name coming into the schools. We lose Holy Ghost fire in Jesus Christ's name into the camp of the enemy of Illuminati and mind control. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Holy Ghost fire. Every person bound out there with mind control and Illuminati. These shooters that go into places and kill people. We bind those spirits in Jesus Christ's name. We pull down every weapon of Illuminati in their minds and cast them to the abyss in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, we lift up Israel now to you, Father God. Oh, thank you for Israel, Lord. We bless them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, we bless that nation, Father God. We bless them, Lord. I pray that they be protected by you, Father God, and your holy angels. I pray for the Jewish nation to come to know Messiah, Yeshua, Jesus, our King and Lord and Savior. I pray for they, he would be revealed to them, Lord. I pray that someone would preach the gospel and that they would receive him. In Jesus' name, I pray for the lost all across the world, Father God. In Jesus' name, the lost souls, Lord, the Muslims, the Buddhists, the Sikhs, every false religion, Father God, the Mormons, the Jehovah's, Lord, we lift them up to you, Father God, that they would come into a relationship with the true Jesus Christ of Nazareth, the King of King and Lord of Lords, our Savior. I pray, Lord, Father God, right now intercede that the scales be removed off their eyes and the weapons pulled out of their ears so that they could hear and see the truth in the gospel. In Jesus' name, I pray, Father. 
Thank you for all things, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. I ask you to continue to bless America and watch over us. Thank you, Father. I pray for these saints that have come today, Lord. I pray that they be blessed this week. The blood of Jesus over them and their household. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, in Jesus' name. Well, if you were blessed, or if you know, the Holy Spirit touched you during that prayer, I, I, I would love for you to reach out to us. We, we would encourage you to give a testimony because there's power in your testimony. And what the Lord did for you may be what someone else needs to hear. So please share this website. Um, share a YouTube channel. If you haven't subscribed already, please do. And if you enjoy the service, we thank you. We love you. We honor you. And, and if you want to support our ministry financially, thank you. We, we offer uh, give offerings to other uh, missionaries and other people that the Lord tells us to, Every uh, other men and women of God. And um, that's all I have to say about that. Well, anyway, God bless you. Love you. Next week, I'll be bringing another piece of armor. There are two left that we have available to us that aren't... One of them is actually listed in the scripture of Ephesians, but it's not really talked about. Um, and the other one isn't, but I've already talked about it in the past through this series. It's in the book of Isaiah. So I want to bring forth another couple of pieces of armor that you have. And so hopefully uh, you will gain some new knowledge on things you didn't know you had available to you. Well, God bless you. I love you. The chat will be on for a few more minutes. And if the chat shuts off right in the middle of a, a conversation, I apologize. It is on a timer. And if that happens, um, you know, reach out to us in an email directly this week or right after the service. God bless.